Hi folks, Andrew again from Home Theatre Engineering. So in this video I wanted to talk about room design and why it's so absolutely critical. One of the biggest problems that we have with home theatre is that strangely enough it's one of the few industries where we just don't finish our work um, and this was posed to me at a training session that I was giving a little while ago and someone said to me why are we one of the few in industries or one of the only industries that, that doesn't finish its work off and I asked him what he meant and his point was that the equipment sold is put in a room and then effectively the supplier often just walks away. We never maximise the job, we never ensure that the equipment is optimised and giving its very best. We would never get away with this in the car industry. Imagine if you went up to a car and it hadn't quite finished a production line, the paint job wasn't done or the uh, windscreens hadn't been installed, or the rubbers weren't on the windscreen wipers, we wouldn't wear that for a second, especially when the, the car was driven straight off the lot from brand new. And yet in home theatre, um, sadly, that's very much the case. And uh, in all my time in this industry, I've yet to be called out to have a look at a home theatre uh, to review it, uh, without finding something very significant wrong with it. And uh, I'm not talking about small issues, I'm talking about the, the fundamental and basic settings not being put into an AVR or a processor. Um, speakers wired to entirely wrong locations and uh, speakers wired out of polarity and so on and so forth. In fact, uh, one of the, uh, the issues that crops up quite often is brand new speakers where, in fact, internally the speakers were never wired up properly in the first place. And this is only found out by measuring and testing, and that's part of the calibration process. But also, I go into rooms where the speakers are in entirely the wrong location. A quick example of that, for, exa for example, is I will see in rooms, if we just spin this round a bit, I want to see the back wall there. So keep going, keep going. There we go. So I'll look at the back wall. And often what I'll see is there will be, the rear speakers will be up here at the top and they'll be firing straight across the room. And the people are sitting down here. Now, it's important to understand that sound behaves differently depending on frequencies. The higher frequency, the more directional it is. The lower the frequency, the less directional it is and, and that behaves um, based on the standing waves in the room and things like that. So if you put your speakers at the back of the room, the sound basically goes straight across the room to the front and bounces backwards and forwards and the only sound that the people hear is what they call off-axis sound. And that means that when you look at a loudspeaker, the further you get off the central axis, the lower the quality of the sound becomes. And uh, so you're getting very poor quality sound there, plus anything else that's reverberating around the room. So the speakers have been put in the wrong location, and I see this every day. Um, and that goes with um, the left and right surrounds, your rear surrounds, your Atmos speakers, and even your LCRs. The number of times that I see an LCR at the front of the room, and I saw this only yesterday, where the LCR is in a cabinet here, and they've got a room with tiered seating, and the LCR, uh, the tweeters and the mid-range drivers are firing straight into the knees of the front row and not reaching the back row at all. And uh, this all compromises your sound. And it doesn't matter what you've paid for your equipment. If it's not done right, then you have absolutely um, uh, restricted the performance that you can get out of your system. So, the way to beat this is to get your room professionally designed. It doesn't cost a great deal. It's certainly one of the missing components in, in developing a home theatre. And so, I'll just run through what it is that we do during a room design. So in this situation, this customer has come to us and it was originally a blank wall. There was no acoustic panels, there was no screen, uh, there were no speakers, and there were no seats. And uh, we'll just get rid of this colourful thing here. Uh, this is uh, a little calculator that we use. Right, so what we've done is uh, we've come along and we've uh, started off by placing left, centre and right speakers in the room. But we've had to give consideration to the position of those speakers and the seating. So these are angled in slightly, and this one is raised up and tilted down slightly, and then we've actually calculated out the mirror points, and we've started to apply acoustic treatment. So let's see if we've got the reflections there. All right, so we've measured this out, and we've worked out the reflections coming back to the seat. Let's see if we can get the seats to, uh, to show in there. Um, right, so uh, at the moment we've moved the seats back, um, because we're in the process of doing some calculations, but you can see that um, the mirror points uh, come to this point here where this, the head originally was. And uh, because we're, we're still working uh, on this 
job. Right, um, we won't worry about the blues and colours flashing up at the moment. Um, so that works out there where our acoustic treatment's going to go. And uh, from that, uh, we then can work out things like the seating position, screen size, projector location, amount of light that's going to go on the screen. Um, but how do we know exactly where our speakers need to go? So we're going to go back to that colourful yellow splotchy thing. This is uh, our uh, little calculator. And what this shows is where the speakers should ideally be. Now, uh, if we remove the screen here, so that's going to go, we can see that our left and right speakers, uh, the tweeters, are just within this angle here. Uh, and all of these figures, they're available on the internet, folks. You can look them under Dolby or THX for your speaker positions. All right, so we can see that we've got the left and rights, the LCRs, at the right position. As we come around, we haven't got any um, uh, uh, surrounds in the forward position here, but we do have the left and right surrounds, and they're ever so slightly rear of the seating position, so they're well within tolerance. And then if we look at our rear uh, left and right surrounds, um, we can see they're also correct there. So that yellow splotch just landing there, and uh, if necessary, these would also be angled in. Right, now if we spin sideways, we can see this angle here, and this uh, then shows us position that is specified for Dolby for their Atmos speakers. So we've got the, the rear, uh, the overhead, and the front Atmos speakers, and uh, that shows the angles, and then we'd line them up with the uh, left and right LCRs, and uh, they would be positioned appropriately in the ceiling. What does this all mean? Well, it's actually really important, because it means that the, the sound gets to the ears of the listeners. If we've got multiple seats, then the, the speakers are calculated, and they're angled, and they're positioned such that if they're front speakers, they're always in front of people. If they're rear speakers, they're always behind people, and so on and so forth. There's no point having a rear speaker that's in front of a certain row because the sound just won't be going to the right place. The other thing is the soundtrack is mixed and it's uh, signalled within, within the audio track to go to speakers in a certain location. So when they're mixing the track, they are sitting in a room that's been properly set up and they are sending the sound uh, and uh, in the new audio tracks it's object based so they can actually drive this sound around the room and they are working out what it will sound like for you in your room. If you put your Dolby Atmos in the wrong place or even your surrounds then that sound isn't coming from the location that these the audio um, engineers um, and the, um, the mixing guys in the film um, were intending. So it's, it's important to get it right. The other thing is to make sure that, um, you know, in your plan, the, uh, the sound is reaching all of the seating positions. If you've got a riser, we want everybody to hear that, that centre speaker. We want everyone to hear all of the speakers around the room and not blocked by heads or seat rests or seat backs or, uh, or other people sitting in the room. Uh, finally, um, the other thing we work on is subwoofer positions. So we will place subwoofers in the room and then we'll calculate out exactly what impact that has on the room and we will see uh, nodes or, or standing waves that are created in the room. Now this is pretty dramatic because if you get it wrong and, and I've demonstrated this in classes, if you place a subwoofer in the wrong place you can literally at certain frequencies have two people sitting shoulder to shoulder and one person gets full bass, 100% of all the bass and the person sitting right beside them can hear nothing at all. This is at a particular frequency. However, that frequency for those people is, is severely impacted. And, uh, you know, uh, that's why you can have arguments about why there's too little or too much bass in a room to some degree. So it's very important to make sure that you've got smooth bass across all your listening positions. How do you achieve that? The very best way to do that, if you have more than one seat, is to have more than one subwoofer. And... Uh, much as it might sound crazy, the best number of subwoofers in a room is four. And in fact, if you're able to invest in four subwoofers, you will guarantee beautiful smooth sound across all of your seating positions if you get it calibrated. Having four subwoofers in a room doesn't solve the problem on its own. They have to be set up properly. Um, but that will then give you incredibly smooth bass. Why is this important? Because 
if you go into a room and your bass is just like a monotone, it's just a boof, 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 single tone, then you are missing out on an incredible experience. But when your bass is set up properly, you get all of the notes, all of the details. So you get to hear, you know, every note produced by a cello or a double bass or, or the lower register of a keyboard, for example, um, or even the things like the, the groaning of, of trees in the wind, all of those things that are natural sounds to us that live in the lower register. And that detail's just missing if your bass is not right. Um, you'll notice that we're not really big on bass traps. Um, that's because bass traps have to be tuned to a particular frequency and they are hard to design, they're expensive and uh, I was talking to some engineers recently, they spent a lot of time, a lot of money, uh, they uh, set up simulations to create the uh, bass traps, put them in a room and they didn't work. Um, now, uh, the placebo effect often tells people that their bass traps are working, you'll see the little foam ones in the corner, pretty much guarantee you they're not. Um, the solution is properly calibrated multiple subwoofers. One is a good start, two is better, and so on. Um, so planning where the subwoofers go is important, and then you can use a simulator, something like Room EQ Wizard, to actually have a look at what's going on at each and every seating position. And when we've finished, we get exceptional bass throughout the room. You can't do this just by having an installer walk in, slap the speakers in the room, throw the sub in the corner, turn the projector on, yes you've got a picture and you're done. The best investments that you can make were with the two products you were never sold. And those two products are comprehensive room design and calibration. These are the only two ways that you can guarantee to get everything that you wanted out of the product you've bought. And it doesn't matter what your budget was, whether it was $5,000 or $5 million. If your equipment goes into a room that wasn't planned and it isn't calibrated, I can guarantee you, you're not getting the performance that you paid for. When you go into a shop, the products they sell you should be room design, cables, amplifiers, speakers, and so on and so forth, and calibration. And I'll bet you anything that a vast majority of people watching this video, these are the products they were never sold. And as an outcome, as a result, you're listening to a compromised home theatre. It may be great, you may be happy with it, and that's absolutely fine. But if you want to know that you've extracted every drop of performance, that you've got everything that you paid for, these are the only solutions. It's the only way you can do that. So it's worth paying someone who knows what they're doing to design a room to place everything in the right place. And there's a lot more to it than that. For example, in the main seating position, we want to know that you're getting reference level. That's 105 decibels. So we will calculate the efficiency of the speakers, we'll calculate the power of the amplifier, and we'll work out the distance from the speakers, and then we can tell you whether or not the equipment you've chosen is actually going to work. The number of people who actually end up buying the wrong gear and never get reference level in their seat is amazing. The other thing is, if you're just getting reference level, the chances are you're pushing your equipment to the utmost limits. So you would need to up the power of your amplifier or the efficiency of your speakers. Um, the same thing applies to your video. I talked about this recently in my calibration video. Um, I recently did a room where they had a massive screen. It was a woven screen and uh, they had a projector at the back. And I went to calibrate the job and uh, the maximum light output we could get was 13.9 foot lambits. To get a decent picture, you need a minimum of 14, and that's just to get started, and that's Blu-ray, that's not HDR. Um, so this projector was struggling from the get-go. Why? A bad room design. And this, this is in quite uh, an impressive room uh, in, a, in a fairly high traffic area. And the issue is the screen was too big, and the, uh, the fact that it was a woven screen meant it absorbed an awful lot of light. A lot of light passes through it and it's also scattered off around the room because of the, the surface is a bit rougher. And uh, no matter what I did, um, I really struggled to get a good calibration. And um, I was a bit disappointed when I left because um, even though I'd done everything I possibly can, the physical limit was the amount of light on the screen and the, uh, the type of screen combination uh, just meant that um, this thing was never going to have any punch. So had that room been properly designed, the light output of the projector would have been calculated, the size of the screen would have been calculated, and the type of the screen might have been reconsidered, perhaps, um, uh, because a room is often a bucket full of compromises. And what we do is we work out which compromises we can live with and which we can't to get you the very best results. It is absolutely worth 
spending some money on getting this done properly. And it doesn't matter what your budget is. If you spent five grand on your equipment, and let's say this cost you a thousand dollars to get done because it takes some time to do this and it takes some expertise, then um, you have absolutely guaranteed that you're going to get a far better result out of your room. And if they said to you, look, um, you can just have your room slapped in or you can have it put in properly, uh, but it takes some time to get this right, what would your choice be? If you know that you're only getting half of the capability from the hardware you've bought, surely an investment in getting it done properly would be what you'd want. You'd want to get the most out of every piece of equipment, out of your amplifier, out of your speakers, out of your screen, out of your projector, and so on and so forth. You'd want to know that you're sitting in the right position and you've got great sound there. Not that you're missing out on a whack of your bass or that your picture can't even make the standard because then everything's going to look flat and dull and lifeless. You're certainly not going to have the dynamic range. So there you go, folks. Um, there's a lot that goes into the design. Um, the other thing I'll talk about quickly is where your equipment goes. That's all part of the plan. We work out in, in this situation, we've got some racks at the front, um, but they could go at the back, they could go in another room. The projector could be moved out the back here, and, and you can even cut a hole in the wall, put some glass in there. The equipment um, can go in another room, and your universal remote can, um, can manage that. Um, in this situation, we, uh, the, these are visible at the moment, but we uh, are able to hide speakers behind acoustic panels. Um, and all of the acoustic panels are calculated as well, folks. We don't just slap them up. This is a very important point. Do not just buy foam panels and slap them on the wall. All right. Um, you need the right type of uh, acoustic panels, you need the right design, and you need them for the right reasons. If you just slap foam on a wall, then what you do actually is you create a notch filter. The foam only works on certain frequencies and generally higher frequencies. If there is no air gap behind the foam and the foam is not really thick, then they're pretty much next to useless. So even though you throw a lot of foam up on the walls and you walk in, you might clap your hands or talk or make a noise and think, that sounds different. The difference is, or the question is, is it good different or bad different? Have you just taken a big notch out of your room or have you, you know, evenly treated the, the problems and the frequencies in the room that need to be controlled? So um, there's a lot of misconception out there. Um, for the DIYs out there, it's pretty simple. High density um, fiberglass or high density um, wadding effectively, of, there's different sort of products available now and an air gap will get you a lot of your job done, but you don't want to over treat the room. If you make it too dead, then you start to collapse the room around you. So again, you need some intelligent thought put into this. Don't put acoustics everywhere. Um, a rough rule is 25% of your wall surfaces um, will get you started in that but you need to understand why you're doing it and why you're putting in the particular places all right and that will save you money I guarantee you I absolutely guarantee you that if you get a room design done right you will save money you won't end up realizing you need to sell some of the equipment you bought because it's wrong that you have bought an underpowered amplifier now you need to sell it second hand and then buy a, a, a new one that your speakers aren't sensitive enough, or that they're not right kind of speakers, or that you've got perhaps incapable subwoofers, or that you've spent far too much on acoustic treatment, and now you've got to rip it off the wall. There's a chance someone's glued it on there, so now you've got to you know, finish the wall off and repaint it. I will be very, very confident in saying that if you get this done properly, then um, you'll save yourself absolutely in the long run and deliver yourself a far, far better room. We'll just spin this around, we'll talk about the back of the room at, at the end. Um, in this room here we can see we've put some diffusers. These are uh, like what they call a skyline panel and these are used to scatter the sound around the room. Now this is a work in progress, it's not perfect yet um, and we're still developing the, uh, the project for a client. But I wanted you to see sort of what goes on. Um, on average uh, it would take us pretty much a full day to, to go through all of the parameters, work out the designs and the measurements and then when we're finished, we give this to a customer with an explanatory video showing how we've done it and why we've done it a certain way. And then at the end of that, um, we uh, then produce them a whole heap of files with measurements and uh, they're pretty much able to go about the job themselves or if they want, we can obviously do it for them. So this is room design. Um, uh, as I said, this is just the 3D model. What you're not seeing here is the calculation for uh, power and uh, reference level levels. You're not seeing the calculation for the subwoofer placement. You're not seeing the calculation for um, 
uh, the projector throw and light output so there's a lot of mass that sort of belongs in this space here that you're not seeing um, and at the end of the day what we end up delivering is a room that absolutely performs and gets everything right and uh, there's no uh, there's no room left for error so I hope this has explained room design for you and uh, as usual if you've got any questions comment on the uh, the video below please subscribe to home theater engineering and of course you can always phone or email us with questions and uh, thanks for uh, joining us yet again